He's been banned from doing that work. And every single person who's come to me and said, well, this guy with all these skills, how, it, there's got to be a security issue. His name is Youssef. There's got to be some type of security issue. He was born in Egypt. And that's what they tell me. But the, here's the, the ironic fact. They took him from operations where he was brilliant and really did great things to help America. And they put him in a desk job, figuring they'd move him out. But he is high ranking, and he's a supervisory agent, and he's a unit chief, and it just so happens that his desk has responsibility for the FBI interface with the National Security Agency's top secret domestic spying program. So don't tell me he's got a security problem. There's only about a handful of people in the world have access to that program. He does. There's no security issue. He's at the highest level. And then don't tell me there's a security issue about FBI or security or national intelligence whistleblowers. This guy's got the highest clearance. He still works. He goes to work every day. Yes, he's retaliated. Yes, he's pushed aside. He's disrespected, but he still goes to work every day. The issue of these people have a security clearance and therefore should not be protected has no validity. And I can also say that since I've represented many people with top secret security clearances in many different positions since 1993, the issue doesn't even come up. Because to have the clearance means you have to know pretty much instantly what's in and what's out. It's a misnomer. But what's the cost of excluding these hundreds of thousands of workers from any whistleblower protection whatsoever? Remember that they were carved out of the law. They have nothing. What's the cost? Well, in my investigations, we determined, and I've interviewed the managers responsible, FBI people knew about the, the cell that did the first World Trade Center bombing before the bombing. In fact, Mr. Youssef was instrumental in trying to get a FISA on them before the bombing. And what these people have said under oath, and the supervisor in charge said under oath, is we could have caught him and we missed it in 1993. And we've heard from many about all of the missed opportunities in the second World Trade Center bombing in 2001. And we have here in our audience a distinguished FBI whistleblower, Colleen Raleigh. I'd like to point her out and say that we should owe her a tremendous gratitude for having the courage to stand up and pointing out what, we, what the people on the inside knew from 92, which is they missed the intelligence because of management failures. And what are these management failures? I gotta tell you, what are these failures? Some of you may have seen the John Stewart show or read about it, and it got some play. It was a deposition that I did of the person responsible for protecting America from Middle Eastern terrorists on September 11, 2001 the manager responsible for protecting the World Trade Center, for protecting the Pentagon, for protecting every single person in this room. Now, Mr. Youssef had worked with them, so he told me what to ask. It wasn't a great, ingenious move. But I asked him, do you know the difference between a Sunni and a Shiite Muslim? The answer, no. And as Mr. Yusuf explained to me, the, di the differences within that cultural divide are so important to understand in terms of recruiting sources, in terms of knowing how to do intelligence, that the man in charge of it, who'd been doing it for years, doesn't know that. Is to, to Mr. Yusuf, it said it all. He also had other questions for me to ask, which were even more damning 
but yet I think harder for people just to understand, like the name of the Iranian intelligence agency. Didn't know that. That's like not knowing the name of the CIA. The problems are there, but the people who know them can't report it. Do we remember after we invaded Iraq with all of the thousands of lives lost, billions of dollars spent, and the billions and billions of dollars that we would be spending for the rest of our lives, veterans payments, disability payments, other damages, the, everyone now knows intelligence failure. But what everyone should also know is that intelligence failure, they knew, they, the people on the bottom knew they were afraid to report it. How do I know they're afraid to report it? Well, they say it, but let's look what the problem really is and how big this problem is and how we, the American people, have to stand up and move. I'm going to give you numbers. These are numbers from three objective scientific studies. This is not the whistleblower advocacy community talking here. This is Price Cooper's Waterhouse, distinguished corporate auditing firm. This is the Association of American Auditors, just straight up accountants and auditors. This is the Ethics Resource Center, which is funded by major corporations. No one on the what you'd call a public interest side. And all the studies done with scientific principles, essentially 95% certainty through doing uh, polling. First, you want to find where the problems are. Who reports them? 50% today, with the bad laws, come from tips, meaning employee whistleblowers, people on the inside who have some information. 19% internal controls, which means all of your contract compliance officers, all of your inspector generals, all of your management controls and auditors who are paid a lot of money to find problems get 19%. The free whistleblower finds 50%. Well, now let's go and ask, what happens with these tipsters? What happens to the whistleblowers? What happens to their information? Scientific poll of federal employees, including national security, everybody. 52% of federal employees report witnessing misconduct at work. It could be from a contractor, it could be from a co-worker, it could be from their management. But in the poll, 52% say they see it. 24% of these employees say they will not report it to anybody for fear of retaliation. In other words, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of employees at the ground level who see the problem but will not report it for fear of retaliation. The rest, except for a small group, will go one step to their supervisor or another manager. Just one step. And under the current Whistleblower Protection Act for federal employees, that one step is not considered protected activity. You can be fired for it. It's crazy, but it's true. So, and if that one step doesn't work, they won't take the second step. Essentially, if their manager says, shut up, they stay silent. Only 6% of those who witness waste, fraud, abuse, violations of law will take it to the next level, which is to a hotline or any other agency outside of their employing agency an inspector general, you know, the ethics office, or wherever they're going to go. We're losing 94%. It's, it's, the numbers are mind-boggling, but it makes sense if you just look at your own life and what you'd be willing to do putting your job on or career on the line.